The Transformers franchise has been nothing if not divisive. While some fans have remained resolutely loyal, the majority of critics and plenty of average moviegoers have criticized its emphasis on noisy CGI style over storytelling substance. Still, the series has raked in a combined total of over $4 billion, proving there's an audience for this series. Or there was, anyway. In 2018, Paramount tabled plans to make a Transformers 7 for the foreseeable future. Why would the studio stop the machine that transformed a toy line into a multi-billion dollar global cinematic affair? The answers might surprise you. Critical Disdain and Financial Struggles No studio wants to invest years of development and millions of dollars into films that critics end up trashing with negative reviews. While that concern is usually secondary to box office grosses, the reality is that with Transformers, Paramount was seeing both dwindle at roughly proportionate rates. Maybe the series' downward-trending Rotten Tomatoes scores indicated a larger problem. Perhaps the average moviegoer finally saw what the critics saw in these films and consequently chose not to see them anymore. It's hardly unusual for action blockbusters to earn middling to negative reviews, but the Transformers pattern was clear. The movies were entertaining fewer and fewer people as they went along. I don't know what you're hiding, but I don't want anything to do with it, so goodbye. You never saw me. I got bagels to schmear. Following the second entry's series high of $402.1 million in receipts, 2009's Revenge of the Fallen, domestic ticket sales have dropped with each installment in the franchise. These movies are extremely expensive. And if audiences are snubbing sequels to such a degree that more than $100 million disappeared between chapters, maybe it's time for Paramount to reassess. It's a worldwide trend, too, as 2017's The Last Night raked in $500 million less internationally than its predecessor, 2014's Age of Extinction. Bye to the Bay very few people are qualified to direct a $200 million movie. It requires an immense amount of technical skill, leadership, coordination, and planning. That is why, love him or hate him, studios respect Michael Bay and his particular set of skills. Bay has been making noise about leaving the franchise for years, but Paramount has kept making him offers he couldn't refuse. A gigantic pile of money. But as of 2017, he has officially departed the franchise. Without Bay, the studio simply doesn't have a go-to guy that can guarantee the successful production of a blockbuster on this scale. A convoluted narrative It's generous to say that the Transformers franchise has really never made a lick of sense. But at least the first movie's plot was simple and elegant. A boy finds out his car is actually an alien robot, and the two go on an adventure to recover a magic cube. It was just outlandish and silly enough to work. From there, however, Bay and his stable of writers have churned out an increasingly convoluted narrative. In Revenge of the Fallen, Optimus Prime was brought back to life by an ancient dagger disguised as a pile of sand. Then, in Dark of the Moon, we learned that the Decepticons had actually been within range of Earth for decades and were simply hiding and waiting for the right moment to reveal themselves. Age of Extinction went even further back in time, claiming there were prehistoric dinosaur transformers. Then, The Last Knight revealed that Bumblebee was a World War II veteran, and that Shia LaBeouf's character was a descendant of the Knights of the Round Table. Uh-huh. It is I, Merlin! The wizard? <laughs> Remember me! Where could the writers have possibly gone from there? Fortunately, it doesn't look like we'll have to find out. Paramount's Brand Priorities Movie franchises often strive to expand the overall brand with success across other mediums, but that's easier said than done, and Transformers is proof. The property has maintained strength in the action figure market, but there's been little growth in other areas. The publishing license remains stuck at a B-tier comic book company, while the latest tie-in video games have been met with middling reviews, or worse. Meanwhile, Paramount has plenty of other big movies for well-known and beloved intellectual properties lined up for 2019, which means a lot of money is already at stake. Currently on the slate are the long-awaited Top Gun sequel, another Terminator reboot, and a Sonic the Hedgehog adaptation. They're all high-profile releases based on huge brands, and they're each risky in its own way. Given all the money on the line with these films, it's only logical that Paramount wouldn't want to further strain its resources on a seventh Transformers. The Bumblebee Gambit Paramount might also be unwilling to proceed with Transformers 7 until the results are in for the Bumblebee prequel. 
technically Transformers 6. If it turns out to be the franchise's last hope, it's in good hands. The director is the supremely talented Travis Knight, who delivered the magnificent Kubo and the Two Strings. If it bombs, that's one more reason why the studio would be right to wait and get its Transformers house in order before sinking any more money into it. Should it flop, that'll probably be the end of the line for the franchise as we know it. Reboot time! Franchise reboots have become fairly common lately, and a complete Transformers do-over would achieve a lot of things at once. It would wipe out the absolutely bonkers backstory that's built up to this point. It could earn a fresh start with fans, provided Paramount shows proof that they've learned from past mistakes. And there's even a chance critics might learn to like the series, so long as there's enough heart, brains, and good old-fashioned fun. All it takes is one press of the reset button, and Transformers can re-emerge as the franchise it was always supposed to be, one every blockbuster fan on the planet can get into.